Hi folks, I'm Richard Friedman, and welcome to my cartoon countdown, Trump cartoon countdown for October 26, 2020. Boy, this, this month has, has really gone by quick. So anyway, today I want to welcome you folks back to my cartoons, and um, I'm, today I'm going to do the top seven of the last, uh, I would say the last ten days or so, top ten cartoons for the most popular on Twitter. So uh, before I get to that, though, I just want to introduce you to my books. I have a series of books that I've written, cartoon, all cartoons on, the tr on issues of the Trump presidency, and they're available on Amazon, and I'll give you the opportunity to have a quick look at them just to show you a sample of uh, each book. Okay, this is the first book I did here. The greatest book of political cartoons on the Trump presidency with a flashback to the Democrat and Republican candidates of 2016. So you get the, the uh, first, uh, the, the, uh, in 2016, you, you get both candidates from the Democrat and Republican parties going at each other, and then you get the Trump presidency into 2018. All the issues. So it's like three, uh, three, three separate chapters of, of cartoons. The biggest book, so I want to give you a sample here, this is pretty, I'm trying to pick out the relevance. They're all, they're all relevant as far, even, even today. But this is, this one, this is Jeff Sessions. And here he is. And he has President Trump. Finger. And what's happening here is Trump launches new attack on Jeff Sessions, saying, I don't have an attorney general. It's very sad. His response and thoughts on White House lawn when asked, are you going to fire the attorney general? So here he said, we are looking we are looking at, he wouldn't recuse himself, Jeff Sessions refused to recuse himself. So President uh, Trump, that was the end of uh, Jeff Sessions for, for, for him, for his career as Attorney General. But anyway, so here is Jeff Sessions taking a look at different things. So President Trump is thinking about him making a window washer at the White House. And here he is washing windows for President Trump at the White House. That would be his next job after Attorney General as a president. And that was from my first example of my first book. And then the second book is right here. Here's my second book. And this is the greatest 2019 book of political cartoons on issues of the Donald J. Trump presidency, edition one, January to June. So many things are happening that I try to, con to condense it and get it out quicker. So this is a uh, a six-month edition, and here's a cartoon from that. There's President Nixon, a ghost of President Nixon, swooping down on President Trump in the Oval Office. And he's saying, and he's saying to him, Okay, Tr Trump says Democrat investigations will help him win in 2020, and the ghost of Nixon returns to the Oval Office to offer advice about the investigations that were beginning at that point. And here, and here is President, and here's former President Nixon, former impeached President Nixon. Oh, he wasn't impeached. Actually, he resigned before he, he was impeached. So, whoop, that's the wrong. Here we go. Here he is. And then you have here Nixon saying, take it from me, after 2020 victory, don't throw away your enemy list. Wish I had ordered an investigation into that F Senate Watergate committee, into maybe thinking about Sam Irvin, or those guys, those who you are old enough to remember, the Watergate Commission, we went, we went through that. So that was in the 70s. So. That's, that was a sample from that, from this book here, again. That was the edition one from 2019. And then this was edition two from 2019. Yeah. Okay. And here you have Okay, 
Well, this is, this is appropriate. I just, I just came across this one here. This is appropriate. Here we have Biden taking a shower, and we got Rudy trying to get something on him. We're looking through the, through the shower window there, through the window in the bathroom, trying to get something on, uh, investigating a Biden. So he couldn't get anything else, so he, he went around and hung around his bathroom window to put his binoculars there. And here he goes. Uh, President Trump defending uh, Rudy Giuliano, who came under investigation. I know he's an honorable man. He was a fantastic prosecutor. I know nothing about him being under investigation. As somebody said, I heard a report today. I can't imagine it. He's a man who looks for corruption. So there he is looking for corruption with his binoculars, looking at, at Biden as he's taking a shower. There. So these are the kind of cartoons that are that you know, have a ring of truth to them. And, and so anyway, let's get to today's, uh, today's stuff. And uh, here, we, here I, I'm going to show, introduce you to a cartoon that I actually just uh, did this morning after watching 60 Minutes last night. And it, it really uh, got a lot of very, very popular one on, on Twitter. So I figured I, I'd bring up that one right here. It's just a flashback, but still appropriate. Is uh, now President Trump on 9/11, and here he is talking about 9/11, and here he's flashing back to it, and this is this is what happened here. Uh, just read it, maybe. Here's a picture of of 9/11. You know, nothing to joke about, but uh, still relevant and, and still, you know, and still relevant to think about. A Trump flashback. Given on the Sunday night broadcast of 60 Minutes, that was last night, Democrat nominee Joe Biden defended attacks made by the president on his mental fit fitness for the presidency. By recalling the president's confusing 9-11, he confused Trump with, who had, con who had confused 9-11 with 7-11 at a Buffalo rally on April 19, 2016. Okay, while he was running for office, he was campaigning at rallies. And this is what he, uh, president, then candidate Trump said. At a rally, he said, I was at World Trade Center on 7 11, and I watched our police and our firemen down there right after it came down. Here's me drinking Slurpees from a Manhattan 9 11 with these great people. So he didn't say, I put it, I injected that 9 11. But with the with the with the with, with the uh, 7 11 but he did say in actuality this is word for word he was at the world center on 7 11 so that's that's all that he did say that that's word for word and the only thing I injected there was the the uh, the slurpee from 9 11 you know <laughs> so yeah. okay Okay, uh, this is another cartoon that I uh, I did today, and I just uh, dated October 26 today. And here, I don't know how this is going to do, but I, I figured I would show it to you. America's coronavirus strategy evolves from at war to it will just go away to we are not going to control it to we will defeat it because we are American. So here's, March, here's President Trump on March 18th, 2020, saying, I look, I look at it, I view it as, in a sense, a wartime president. So here he's making that statement for the first time, saying that he, he views himself as a wartime president. Okay. Here he is, accusing himself of a wartime president. Then he goes on, on taking it uh, to September 16th, 2020. He gets into his the virus will go away routine. The virus will just go away and disappear. Okay. Then we go to October 25th. October 25th, and we have the president saying, 
Trump, Trump keeps on declaring the U.S. is rounding the turn on COVID-19, even as it recorded its two worst days of infections ever, basically. You know, so there. So. so anyway, so he's ba basically saying, uh, you're in the driver's seat, don't worry. You know, we, we're basically pulling out, pulling out of this, uh, you know, this uh, war that I declared, I said, as a wartime president, I'm going to let you fight for yourself. You know, it's just like if President Roosevelt uh, said when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, you know, folks, you know, you're in it you're for yourselves. You've got your own fight and go out, get your bayonets and everything in case the Japanese start raiding. You better be prepared. Get your, get your homes all prepared and everything. Fight yourself. Good luck, folks. You know, like after Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt had said that. You know, this is this is with an insidious thing that you can't see though. The Japs you could see coming on on shore, you'd see their their zeros planes coming in, and you see their ships and their aircraft carriers. Here we don't see nothing. We're just we're just just in the air, you know. So you know, it's like out and out invasion from outer space. You know. Now here is this October. This is today. This is what said a few hours ago. October 26, 2020, Mark Meadows, White House Chief of Staff. Uh, this, he said yesterday, we are not going to control the pandemic. You know, that's what he said, basically. So, so he, he tried to, he doubled up on that today. He said, again, we're not going to control the pandemic, but he qualified that statement by saying, we're going to defeat it because we are Americans. You know, in other words, we're going to defeat it because we're Americans. You know, so again, it goes back to the analogy I just did with President Roosevelt. If Roosevelt said, well, we're going to feed the Japs, everybody's on their own to fight the Japs, we've got to go do what you got to do, you know, board up your houses, you know, out on the West Coast, and, uh, you know, do what you got to do, we're, we're going to beat them because we're all Americans, you know. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's the new mantra here, we're all Americans, you know, dying all Americans. Okay, well, anyway, I mean, sardonic humor, but it's, it's the fact, and it's, I don't do this to, to provoke you or make you unhappy or, or anything like that. I just did inform you what's going on, and you make the call who you want to vote for. You know, I'm not running any kind of campaign here or working for any campaign or nothing. I'm just out here giving you a joke, and then you decide for yourself. Okay, so there it was. Mark Meadows, President, to, to President Trump's and a statement from President Trump. Okay. Now, we get into the village people's YMCA dance. Okay, here's President Trump doing his YMCA dance. YMCA. So what I did was, I basically had, I drew him dancing, and then I put, had him putting in his own words to the song. So, okay, so here we go with President Trump. He's dancing, you know, dancing around. You know, and he said, young man, there's no need to feel down. I said, young man, soon the China virus will not be around. I said, young man, are you listening to me? There's a Trump rally where you could be. Boom, boom, boom. First, you can get yourself clean. First, you better get yourself clean and have a good meal at the YMCA. Everyone just, so anyway, that's that. Well, as a footnote to that, uh, I heard that the village people got a little upset with President Trump for using their song, and they, they made their own song to, to uh, kind of uh, counter President Trump, saying that they were going to hire a, a Harvard attorney who was going to do a order to cease and desist, and they did that routine with their song. Uh, well, I don't know how they worked it in, but that's, that's what I, I, I read. And, It'd be interesting to hear that song, how they, how they did that. So anyway, yeah, there it is. There's President, President Trump. His dance was YMC. All right. Now, here is, I'm trying to put this in some sort of logical sequence in here a little bit here. Now, here is herd immunity in action. Okay, we got here herd immunity in action. You see? 
Everybody's talking about herd immunity. So this is what herd immunity amounts to, where they follow the herd, go off cliff. So here he is, again, Tyler's cartoon, Herd Immunity in Action, amid Trump's closest and favorite White House Task Force member, Dr. Scott Atlas. That's pr apparently President Trump's uh, number one advisor now, who he trusts. Not only does he, he think he's uh, on the right track, but he trusts him, you know, because he's not part of the fake news, and he's not connected with any of the... Of the of the, not, maybe Fox News, he's, he's, he could, he's a little bit with Fox, I'm sure he's with Fox News, but other than that, he's not with, uh, you know, uh, CNN, or MSNBC, or that, or this and that. So anyway, amid closest friend, White House Task Force member Dr. Scott Atlas saying, we, we can allow a lot of people who are not at risk to get infected with the coronavirus. It is fine if they die, this is word for word, I didn't make this up. It is fine if they die or have a serious illness because that will generate herd immunity in the community. You know, that sounds like another song, herd immunity in the community. So what he's saying here, Scott Atlas is basically saying he's going to protect the, uh, we, we have to protect the elderly and the most vulnerable from getting the virus. And once we protect them, they won't get, and the people who are, you know, young and this and that and, and healthy, well, they'll, they'll either get it and they'll, and they'll develop immunity, or they'll get it and die. So, so those people die. So, pretty you, what you'll be left with are a number of the, the old people who we protected from getting it, plus the people who built up immunity. See, so so the people who built up immunity won't get it, and they won't give it to the old people. So there it is. We we beat the corona bandit. You know, I mean, everybody, every medical professional uh, professional says it's, it's 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 suicide, it's mass murder. But you know, I mean, uh, you know, sometimes mass, I guess mass murder is a, is a, you know, I don't know, I mean, you, you take it for what? I don't want to get into deep thought here about it, but this is what people have said. That I'm not saying that people have said this, but professional uh, uh, people who deal with these kind of disease specialists, infectious disease specialists have said this. Uh, nobody uh, reputable has gone along with Dr. Atlas is a renegade here on his own, you know. It's just like uh, that movie, uh, if you saw it uh, a long time ago about the Vietnam War, when a guy took over his own, Marlon Brando, when he takes over his own troops, he runs a whole thing, and he, uh, Apocalypse Now, that's what, Apocalypse Now with Marlon Brando, just like that, that's what this is, Apocalypse Now here, you know, and, and there, 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 that's what it was. You know, this Mom Brenner, he's got a bald head and he's running around with the, he's developed a whole community in, in, in the, during the Vietnam War. So uh, he's a general and, and he's a renegade general. So this is what we have here, a renegade doctor, basically. And the other horses just following each other right off the cliff. All right, I've said about that, you decide, you know. All right, now here. Um, here is, again, on the flip side, the flip side of that is Dr. Anthony Fauci. Here he is, getting upset uh, with President Trump, getting at him this way, and he's getting upset, and he's telling President Trump that this could backfire, the the, the way he's uh, handling this situation. Uh, putting he put him in, a, in an ad, saying that he nobody could have done more, like as it was President Trump, but it was his uh, the people, the, the hospital workers who he's talking about. Nobody could have done more. So they made it sound, in the sound bite, like he was talking about President Trump couldn't have done anything more than he did. So that's the way it would come across to, to somebody who was from outer space, who just who spoke, understood English. You know, that's the way it would come across. So he was upset about that, and I'm sure he, was, he wasn't, he was upset about President Trump going at him so hard as he did, you know, because he, he's taken a lot of heat from, from, from groups and from people who are upset about the shutdowns and everything. So, so, I mean, the man is trying to do his job and uh, protect America, and he's and he's getting this kind of thing. So, he, you know, you got to give him credit though he hangs in there. And this is this is he got you know Lindsey Graham when he did a thing I did a video where he was throwing his cell phone around. So I I did, took that and, and here he does he's doing this with his uh, with his flat screen TV, throwing it around the room and smashing it. You know, so. This is called Fauci's Demolition Derby, Demolition T, Fauci's TV Demolition Video, Fauci's Demolition 
TV, TV demolition video he would do to uh, to get back at Trump. To, that, that's how it would backfire for President Trump. Okay. But you know, so anyway, uh, that was that one. And here is okay. Trump in real time watching for a biased biased now. Uh, I don't know whether President Trump watch this report or not, but it's, a, it's, it's out there, it's on, tele, it was on, it was on television, uh, on every little channel, it's a cable channel, and it, it's, a, it's, it's a valid study that was done. And here is President Trump watching it on television, and what the study basically uh, found, the findings were, Trump, the COVID case, in, the COVID cases per capita in states governed by a Democratic governor and legislature have been significantly lower than the rates in states with a Republican governor and legislature. So the states that were led by Democrat governor and a Democrat legislature had fewer cases than the, than the uh, Republican, same thing, same on the Republican leadership. And President, uh, Trump is saying the cases are up because testing is way up and by far the most and, and best in the world. So that's what he's saying. He's saying here, he's saying cases, cases, cases. That's his response. He, I think he tweeted this out. The president he tweeted this. The fake news is talking cases, cases. Cases are up because testing is way up. By far the most and best in the world. We have the best in the world, but because if we have the best in the world, that's why we have the most cases because we're testing the most in the world. So that's President Trump's reasoning. That's how he thinks about it. So here, here is President Trump watching, watching Anthony Fauci on on his uh, flat screen television. Uh, not, not Anthony Fauci. He's watching the report being given. The findings of this report. And this was done by a, a bio a biostatistics professor at a reputable university, who did this study with a group of, of uh, doctors. He's a biostatistics. Uh, professor at a reputable university, and uh, here is what President Trump's response could have been if he saw it, and I just hypothesized here about it. Okay, he's saying, "What does this idiot Democrat biostatistics bio professor know? With statistics, you can cook Alaska and say it's warmer than Florida. The mortality rate is down 85 percent plus." So he's saying. Very few people are dying now, so that means we're on the way. We're we're, pro we're doing even the hospitals are up. The, the hospitals don't even have enough beds. Every all the hospitals are being jammed, and they're worrying about well, having to put the putting patients in tents, and and, and they're going to have to prioritize who they who they treat based on age. And and, and President Trump saying we're turning the corner, because turn the corner because fewer people are dying, you know. So people have long-term effects from this thing, and they're fairly upset with and the hardship, and, and still people are still dying. So is there any, I don't know if the 85 percent. I don't know. If we've got that number. I don't know. You know, that's another thing. Anyway, people in are doing so well, though, according to President Trump, people in coronavirus hospital wards are doing fantastic. They say in some places the patients are having ping pong tournaments. You know, they say having ping. He didn't say that. He's, he's talking like that. You know. You know. <coughs> anyway, all right. I'm not making jokes about this. I'm just trying to bring home the point. Bring home the point that uh, when we're voting, this time we're, we're voting for for uh, the people who are, are potentially either going to, are, are best qualified to save our lives. So it's more than, it's more than the, it's the, the economics, it's more than the stock market, it's more than economics, it's more, it's more than anything, it's your life. If you don't have a life, everything else is, is gone. You know, you can't take it with you. So we're voting for that. So um, that's, that's my message, uh, you know. Anyway, this is numero uno de la semana, but because this really did very was very popular on Twitter. Now, 
they had for the for the second debate, presidential debate, what they did was they put in a uh, a uh, microphones were uh, were were blocked. Debates now debate will see organized mute. They were muted for two minutes, two minutes of uninterrupted time per se. So everybody had a, both candidates had a chance to speak for two minutes uh, of being uninter un uninterrupted for two minutes on each topic. Okay, and President Trump, when hearing about this, he said, has char he characterized the, the po his policy as ridiculous, and he, he said it's ridiculous and it's, uh, it's uh, you know, he was against this idea, you know, so, and this was October 21st, 2020, and uh, what I said was basically President Trump's dream about how he would overcome this rule and during the debate and what would happen here. So here we have, again, this is a dream, a hypothetical dream President Trump had. Okay, so let me go to President, uh, former, pre uh, former Vice President Biden. Here he is, and he starts with his two minute topic here, and he's saying, hell, th this is absolutely true. The other day, for the 14th time this year, our jets intercepted Russian bombers off the Alaskan coast, this time just 30 damn miles off the U.S. It sounds like President Trump is relying on Alaska's grizzly bears to take care of the Russians. Now, where is and President, President Trump in, in, injects with his, he's got one of those loudspeakers that he brought with him, you know, to overcome the mute system, the muted system, and he says, Lock him up, meaning uh, former Vice President Joe Biden, candidate for President Joe Biden, lock him up based upon the fact that he spied on his campaign along with Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. It was a conspiracy, part of the conspiracy to lock him up, and he also was involved. He, he, there's no evidence to this, but he said he has evidence that they were involved in Ukraine with his son uh, doing uh, working. Uh, for this company, and uh, but anyway, the point of the matter is nothing has been discovered that this son or, or, or Biden did anything wrong. There's no, and when they asked him, they pressed him, he said, well, he, he, he did this, he, it's, all, it's all general stuff. You could ask this person, you can do this, you can do that. You can go to New York Post, you can read the New York Post and you get the evidence right there, you know, things like that. But there's no hardcore uh, evidence that the president Trump was able to produce or say he had, you know, heard of or saw. So, anyway, that was that. And this was the, the uh, most popular in the last 10 days on Twitter, this, this, this cartoon here. So, I want to leave you folks with the good thoughts and tell you that I hope you all stay well, take care of yourselves, and, uh, I know Thanksgiving's coming up. It's going to be tough for me, too. I used to spend it with my family this year. You know, um, most of my, it's tough to, it's tough, it's a tough proposition. I don't know. But the thing is, we, we just got to do uh, the best we can. And, um, and that's it. That's what it comes down to, but with, with good common sense and taking the right precautions. And uh, I wish you all the best. And you take care of yourselves. And I always say, God bless, and God bless America.